Today, we are building this vacuum boom for a CNC machine. It's super simple and easy to do. Kind of one of those things you wonder, why have I not done this much sooner? Hmm. And this is basically what the parts look like. So I'll make this file available for free download. Just check the description and then just drag this into your software. So in VCarve, I'm quickly going to show you how I set this up for myself. First, we need to create a new file and I'll just set up the job size to match the plywood that I'm going to be using. And from there, I'm just going to go and import that file, which is an SVG file. Next, I'll just bring that to the center and then just move it slightly towards the left hand corner. Then we're going to do a profile toolpath and I'll set my depth and I'm using a 1.8 down cut spiral bit. And also I'm just going to change the total depth of cut. I'm happy with 1.5 millimeters and make sure you set this to outside and then I'm going to use 3D tabs as well just to hold everything in place while it's cutting. So adding four tabs and then I'm just removing the ones that are going to be hard to remove afterwards. Uh, you know, anything in a tight corner or something and just moving them to a nice flat surface. So once that's done, I'll just add some ramps to my toolpath as well and click calculate. From there, you can preview it if you like. And if you're happy with that, just click save and you are ready to go. After they've been cut out, I'm just going to give them a nice round over on my little router table, which if you haven't seen this build, just check the link at the top right hand corner of your screen. And while you're watching me do all the work here, I would appreciate it if you could like and subscribe as well. Next, we'll just give everything a nice coat of polyurethane just to make it look nice. And then we are going to mount the hinges. So this block will mount flush on the wall, which will allow the arm to move backwards and forwards like this. Also, take your time marking out where these hinges go. If you don't do them properly now, you're going to have issues with it not swinging properly. And from there, it's basically just drilling some pilot holes and screwing them down. Once you've done that, you can do the same on the other side where you're mounting the block that goes on the wall. And we might as well just mark and drill the holes for where we're going to mount this to the wall. Next, we're just going to check where we're going to mount this, checking the height and the location. I use the spirit level here just to give me a guideline to where I want this exactly. So it's easy to screw this to the wall. Next, it's time to mount these brackets. And the first one obviously goes on the front. And to do that, I'm just using a small G clamp like this. And then using my square, just making sure that everything lines up perfectly. Then it's just a matter of marking the center of that bracket, drilling a hole and screwing it down. And then you repeat it for the top as well. To add the bracket on the back, it's easier if you have the hose on the boom itself so that you can see where that bracket needs to go exactly. And obviously this one goes upside down like this. And then it's the same procedure. Use your square just to line everything up. Drill your holes and screw them down. The bracket on the right hand side of the boom is the one that's going to be holding the end of the hose. Now I just need to pause here for one second because I actually used the wrong bracket here. This one goes on the wall because it's got this little groove at the bottom and that's meant for the power cable. And again, mark the center, drill your holes and screw it down. The last bracket obviously goes on the wall and this one just keeps your vacuum hose well away from everything so it doesn't get caught. 
Now also, this is the point where you're going to have to do some testing. Just move everything around and see that nothing gets caught anywhere. You might have to use something like a zip tie like I'm doing here, just to keep everything in place as it moves. And also the bracket on the right hand side had to move forward because it was easier to reach. So one tip here is not to make it too long. Just make it so that it reaches the middle of your spoil board. And then if you want to change it a bit, you basically unhook your hose. And when you're done, just hook it back in. The one thing that I will change on this design in the future is removing where this power cable goes. So at the moment, it's fine, it works. I just don't like the look of it. So what I'm thinking is using something like this. This is drag chain, by the way. So your power cable essentially runs on the inside of this. And as it moves left and right, it just does that. So that's going to sit on the back here inside a little U-channel that's probably going to be bolted to the side of these rails. And uh, yeah, I think that'll just make it look a lot neater. So you just basically have your hose running inside of this boom. I think that's what I'm going to do. And there we go. This is a very simple, straightforward build anyone can do. You can make this with any hand tools you like. You do not have to have a CNC machine. It's just easier. So let me know what you think. If you got any suggestions on how to make this even better, I'd really like to hear your thoughts on that. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.